welcome and thank you, Sir Antonio Papano and Beatrice Trana, for uh, joining us today at the Artist Studio presented by Abu Dhabi Festival. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Ihab Darwish. I'm a music, Emirati music composer and will be performing live uh, this month uh, at Abu Dhabi Festival in my world premiere. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to ask you the, the first question for both of you. How did you first come to music? And what made you choose the path of being a conductor and pianist? So if I can start with um, Sir Antonio. My father was a singer and a voice teacher. There was a piano in the house. There were recordings. Um, and so uh, at a certain point, I was six years old, and all I was thinking about was playing with my friends and, and playing football. And, <laughs> and, but my father uh, decided that it was important that I take piano lessons. And so I started uh, taking piano lessons. It was a, seemed like a, a very natural thing to do. But I was not, I was interested in music, but not particularly. I was sort of an ordinary uh, young boy growing up in England. But then it started to work on me. It started to I, I started getting to progressing at the piano, so then I started to be attracted to what music actually is, and it's very personal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what And uh, what was like your first piece? Do you remember the first piece you played? Well, one of the <laughs> well, um, I mean, everybody plays. Um, <laughs> and uh, La da 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 Beethoven romance, and <coughs> and the theme to um, match of the day. <laughs> and uh, and uh, these were things. And and you know when I was playing, starting to get good enough, I used to accompany my father, the Neapolitan songs, O Sole Mio, and Torna Sorriente, and all these things. These very famous songs. So amazing. Yeah, I mean, you're not very nice. <laughs> and uh, Beatrice, um, I was it? born in a, in a musician's family. Both my parents are pianists, and um, uh, actually, I I didn't think that playing the piano was something different from uh, speaking or eating uh, lunch. So I just started to play the piano, and um, I, I really I really realized that it was something different when I first attended the primary school, when I saw my friends that were not playing any instrument. Uh, so I, I, it, was, it was not a passion, it was not something that I wanted to do, it was just part of my daily life. And that's what I feel also now, it's, uh, it's just part of, uh, of my nature. And uh, so I, I don't remember, for example, the first the pieces first piece that, of, yeah. that I played. <laughs> I remember very much the, the first big challenge that I did, uh, that was uh, the Mozart variations, uh, Avudi Reje Maman. And uh, that piece was the piece that I was bringing uh, in competitions when I was uh, seven years old. And that I remember very well because it was the first time that I, w I really had something challenging to play on stage and I enjoyed it very much. Me being an Emirati and uh, having an Arab culture, it influenced my music. For you, like um, you have an Italian heritage, how, th how far do you think that the cultural identity affects music or influences music in a way? Well, <coughs> Italy is the land of opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the son of a singer, of a tenor, and uh, being now involved in opera for over 30 years now, I've been doing, working in opera houses all over the place. Um, I'm very influenced by the rhythm of the language, of the Italian language, and how it is transporting. It's a, it's a language that, that brings you, it, it pulls you somewhere. It's, it has great direction. So of course that influences the way I conduct, and um, but it's also very uh, Italians are very lyrical. They love the sound 
they love not only melody, beautiful melody, but they love how a beautiful melody actually sounds. So they have, a, um, I think the, the importance of, of beauty and poetry in the music making is, is so important. Um, of course, what is more difficult uh, for, for Italians is, is the structure and discipline and, and to give this beauty uh, and, and uh, a framework. And so this is one of the great challenges of, of, uh, of making music, is to, to try to create rigor and, and discipline, and yet to feel like you're, you're, you're flying and you're singing. Mm. So if you're at the piano, I would imagine that you know, singing on the piano is so important. Singing, uh, uh, if you're playing the violin, because that's our culture. Mm. And the culture is about singing. I would say also, uh, in addition to that, we are a very dramatic country. We love drama, and probably that's why opera was born in Italy. Of course, in Italy. Uh, that's the best part of it, the drama Yeah, part. but that's, yeah. <laughs> that's very important. That I realized myself that mm -hmm. uh, the drama, the, the really the, the possibility to create a story, it's uh, one of the priorities uh, of our culture, of our music tradition. That's amazing, that's amazing, 100%. Um, another question for Sir Antonio. Uh, you've had an exceptional career, like leading prominent European institutions from the Royal Opera House in London uh, to Orchestra Santa Cecilia in Rome. How much do you think the role uh, in developing the character of the orchestra and what does it actually involve? Um, in terms of the Royal Opera House, um, working with an orchestra that is playing opera and ballet, many, many performances and so much preparation. Um, we have to be incredibly flexible um, going from Tchaikovsky one night to Mozart the next night to Verdi to Wagner to uh, Shostakovich to, um, <coughs> to, to Beethoven <laughs> to, <laughs> to Bernstein to, and, and also have the strength and stamina and character uh, of sound to, to perform these pieces which are very long. In opera, the pieces are long. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the styles are so different. So I, I, I try to make sure that the orchestra feels like they're reinventing themselves if, with each different piece. The piece. This piece demands this. This piece demands that. You have to be, you know. And I guess, I have to be honest with you, I, I think I do the same with my symphony orchestra. I try to create narrative, try to, tell, to talk about story, but there's also a work about sound and how sound, once it, it this is especially true on the piano, you hit a sound on the piano, bing, yeah. and the sound dies away slowly. <laughs> but with an orchestra, <coughs> You have the possibility of sustaining this sound mm -hmm. and creating this onward moving, this uh, beautiful uh, continuity of tone. I mean, you can create that artificially on the piano, of course. Yeah. Yes. And that's the big challenge of playing the piano. But in the orchestra, you have the opportunity to create. It can go on for, for like forever, you know. And, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> but this needs work because, of course, it needs work it needs to be demanded by the conductor, but also, for instance, the strings have to really realize that when they change the bow, that the, so, that the sound doesn't stop. When mm. a, a, a wind player breathes, it, the, the sound might stop for an instant, but it mustn't stop, it mustn't park. You don't park the car, you keep <laughs> the car moving. It's just a, an intake of breath to then continue. So yes, and, and, and so these things are so important um, to constantly remind the orchestra, remind yourself of the importance. Um, you've received many impressive um, accolades in your career to date, including being recognized as the Gramophone Young Artist of the Year Award. Uh, what does like this mean to you? 
Uh, of course, it's uh, it's a big honor, and um, I think it's a it's a nice way to know that you are on the right way because I am just at the beginning and. Uh, uh, I'm also trying out different repertoire. I didn't decide what to focus on yet. I'm I'm trying really to to be open up to every kind of repertoire. And uh, uh, of course, the, these kind of awards is very important, especially after such a big work as I did with the Goldberg. Uh, but um, I mean, it's uh, it's really a, a long way ahead of me and. Uh, I hope, <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of work, but also a lot of inspiration from the others. And what I what I love uh, in my life nowadays is uh, that really so many collaborations and so ma so many meetings with great musicians can inspire so much and uh, can really give me also a different perspective on the music making, which is uh, like so important for me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Sir Antonio, um, if you can tell us some of the challenges uh, being a conductor and uh, being a conductor and artistic director at the same time, what challenges you have faced? And One of the great challenges of uh, being a conductor is the amount of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think I'm joking, I'm not. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, there's a lot of sweating. Um, yeah. There's a lot of learning of music and learning of complex music because there's so many people playing and to make sense. I think the most important thing the conductor has to know is how to learn. How do you learn? How do you look at a piece of music mm. and learn it so that you can then communicate yeah. how to put it together? Yeah. You know, so this is a constant challenge. It's a very great challenge to learn how to learn. To stay in good enough shape that you can physically manage mm -hmm. because some some conducting is is really physically demanding mm -hmm. um, I, I, I spoke before of the long operas mm -hmm. um, but it's not only those sometimes you know you get to the end of a symphony and you know you you you, you feel like mm -hmm. you know my god you could have a heart attack or something as you get older hopefully you learn when to save when to let the musicians do it before <laughs> you do the work and not you. Um, I think one of the challenges today is that we have audiences who, which are perhaps not as educated as maybe in the past um, for one reason or another. There's so many distractions in modern life, so much technology, so many competing uh, institutions and f and realities. I think every musician, every musician who is in, has a little uh, power or a position to be able to talk to their audiences, explain, take away the mystique, take away the fear of of of, of classical music, and make people realize that. Actually, classical music is, is can be very exciting, especially live. Yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. if if we're performing generously, if we're giving our all to the performance, and the public knows a little something about what they're hear, hearing, mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Today, we cannot just simply say, "Well, I'm a musician. I've got an orchestra. I'm going to go do a concert. People will pay the tickets. They'll come." It's a little bit more complicated than that, I think. Now there needs to be this interview, for instance, that we're doing. We need to communicate. We need to show that we're actually uh, flesh and blood human beings <laughs> who have uh, fears, challenges, that they're, you know, um, uh, laundry and and uh, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so it's a. It, it, but we must see it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that we have a chance to come closer to the public so that a public that knows a little something about what they're experiencing will stay with us. Keep people curious and satisfy that curiosity. Educate.
last question will be, um, what is creativity? How do you define it? Does it come on the spot or do you earn it? If you can tell me more about that. As a conductor, I'm not a creative musician. I have to be honest. I'm not a composer. I'm a recreative uh, musician. Um, I composed a little bit uh, when I was younger. And the idea of composing um, I find fascinating. That said, I do quite a lot of contemporary music. And there I feel mo most creative because I help, especially when I do a premiere, um, I help really bring to life something that, is, that doesn't exist yet, that has not been born yet. And in that sense, I feel very, very creative. Also, to, to find solutions for the, 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 for the new, for ha perhaps the experimental, perhaps um, uh, the misjudged, or perhaps for an idea that just needs a little help to, mm. to bring it, you know, that and to do that and doing new opera, new, new operas, new stories. Um, that to me is extremely creative and to be part of that process and, and to have the guts to say, no, this is no good, cut it, let's get rid of that. Or this works, this doesn't work, this is, this is great. And to be involved in a process where everybody doesn't know until the first night you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing experience. Of course. No, no, I agree with him because uh, we are not composers, so creativity is in a different sense. Uh, it's not creating something really from nothing, but it's what I enjoy very much and what I do is the creativity of sound, especially when, uh, when I am in, uh, in solo recital, when I really have the freedom and uh, to, to create sound and really w with the hands. This is something that um, it's, it's a very beautiful feeling but also very tricky because uh, as, as you were saying before, music is about uh, going towards something and sometimes this creativity of sound can make myself uh, very self-indulgent and uh, you know, you, you have the, the sense of beauty of the sound, but then it becomes by, by itself. So creativity is always, um, is, has always to be balanced with something else. That's, that's what I feel. But uh, for sure, this is, the, this is what we live for, a mu musician. Yeah, that's, that's the job, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's really exactly what... Creative, the way you perform it, the way you put your emotions, the way you put the sound for it. It is creative in, in, in a sense for us, yes, of course, yeah. of course. Thank you, thank you very much for this amazing uh, interview. Uh, we're really happy to have you here with us. Thank and you for the invitation, thank see you. you. See you, so see you in the, in the news. Thank you very much, thank you.